All right, welcome to the top 10 Gohan fights. As we continue to look at the top 10 fights of the main characters from Dragon Ball Z. And this will be just like the others where I'll explain why each is in its respective place. So let's begin. Number 10, Gohan versus Lavender. During the exhibition match set before the Tournament of Power, Gohan is matched against Universe 9's Lavender, who blinds him with poison that starts to rot away his body. Gohan goes Super Saiyan during the fight, and it becomes a race to see if he can defeat Lavender before the poison takes full effect. While Gohan is successful in knocking out Lavender, he passes out right after this, which causes the match to be viewed as a draw. I did not like Gohan's usage or lack thereof during Super, and this fight was the first time in that series where it actually felt as if the writers cared just a little bit about his character. Even though it's not a victory, it still doesn't strike me as a loss and actually was interesting due to Lavender resorting to a technique, something that modern Dragon Ball fights have been lacking in favor of whoever punches the hardest wins. The reason it's at the bottom is because outside of the matches in the exhibition tournament, it doesn't have that much of an impact on the overall story since Lavender fades away very quickly from importance for the remainder of the show shortly into the Term of Power. It's really only here because before, all of Gohan's fights in Super were either against a goon <laughs> or getting one-shotted by the main antagonist, like with Beerus and Frieza. So that fact made this fight refreshing, but didn't stop it from being less significant to the arc than the others. Number nine, Gohan versus Cell Juniors. Fresh off of his transformation into a Super Saiyan 2, Gohan single-handedly eliminates the Cell Juniors that Cell released to torture the Z Fighters. This fight is mostly here for cathartic reasons. Oftentimes, when an antagonist brutalizes likable characters, such as Future Trunks or Yamcha, it's nice to see the anointed character, usually Goku, though not here, deliver a beating and subsequent termination of said antagonist. But the reason it's down here is because it really isn't much of a fight and more of a bunch of one-shots that look cool and feel gratifying because of how unredeemable the Cell Juniors had shown themselves to be. Number eight, Gohan versus Piccolo and Krillin. During the anime exclusive Garlic Jr. saga, Piccolo is seemingly infected by the Blackwater Mist through being bitten by other possessed characters. After a fight with Gohan, Piccolo then infects Krillin and the two fight Gohan, promising Garlic Jr. the right to deliver the finishing blow. As Piccolo is about to deliver the finishing blow, Garlic Jr. stops him to remind Piccolo of their agreement and Piccolo reveals himself to have been faking being infected as a ruse to lure Garlic Jr. over so he and Krillin can release Kami and Mr. Popo from their containers. I've been part of what seems to be a minority of people that really like the Garlic Jr. saga, which is fine because I've got my reasons for liking it. But one of them is this fight because its end result actually surprised me. There was a person who was reviewing the Justice League animated series from the early 2000s, and he was talking about how despite Batman having to live because Batman Beyond takes place after Justice League, when the show would put Batman in danger, it was still interesting to watch because of the twist that came out of these scenarios being fun to watch, even if you knew he was going to live. In knowing that Gohan wasn't going to be killed during a filler arc, I assumed he would unleash his hidden power against Piccolo and Krillin and then defeat Garlic Jr. by himself. Instead, it turns out, he loses, but it's okay because Piccolo's Namekian structure prevented him from being infected while allowing him to pretend that he was under the possession of Garlic Jr. This actually surprised me, and outside of a very good twist, the actual fight is very refreshing since we never get to see Piccolo or Krillin fight on par with the Saiyan outside of this battle. Not counting the last tournament from Dragon Ball before Goku was revealed to be a Saiyan. Number seven, Gohan and Krillin versus Captain Ginyu. When Captain Ginyu becomes aware of how much stronger Goku is than him, he decides to switch bodies with him. Gohan quickly recognizes Ginyu as not being his father and joins Krillin and Goku, who's in Ginyu's body, in fighting him. I like this fight because it's one of the few times in the entire series where characters presented with a moral conflict while battling someone else. 
The scene where Gohan hesitates and ultimately cannot hit Ginyu and Goku's body is something we really never see again in the series. The idea that because one character might love another one, then they can't bring themselves to hurt that person. The scene after this where Krillin convinced him to put aside his feelings is also very sympathetic because Krillin, as someone who also cares greatly about Goku, can understand Gohan's dilemma. The only thing holding this fight back is that it's not that long, but it's still enjoyable. Number six, Gohan versus Boo Tanks. After Super Boo coerces Goten and Trunks into fusing, he absorbs the pair as Gotenks and Piccolo and assumes a new form that makes him stronger than Ultimate Gohan. Super Boo proceeds to pummel Gohan until the arrival of Goku and at that point reverts to a weaker form due to Gotenks' fusion ending. The reason I like this fight is a little difficult to explain. I was someone who would have preferred having Gohan defeat Super Buu and have that be the ending of the Buu saga, which I've already stated my distaste for because I think the story dragged toward the end. That being said, I like the idea of having Super Buu get a new form that made him stronger than Gohan and would make the latter winning all the more satisfying because we had never seen the main villain get a new form during the final fight of the arc that made them stronger than the hero. Vegeta and Frieza already had their great ape and 100% forms before fighting Goku. And Super Perfect Cell was only stronger than Gohan because the latter's arm was weak from protecting Vegeta. The biggest takeaway from this fight is its ending. You have Gohan get smacked around by Super Buu for multiple chapters or episodes just so the former can get absorbed after Goku shows up. The fight is literally a complete waste of time. They could have had Super Buu absorb Gotenks, Gohan, and Piccolo at the same time if he was just going to absorb them all eventually and after absorbing the three of them be confronted by Goku and Vegeta. I don't want to turn this into a, a, a Buu Saga rant, but that fight accomplished nothing for the larger narrative and that's why it's down here. Number five, Gohan versus Super Buu. After getting his potential unlocked by Old Kai, Gohan arrives on Earth to confront Super Buu, who he states his interest in killing before engaging in a fight that he completely dominates Super Buu during. I like this fight because it felt like a continuation of the Cell Games fight between Gohan and Cell, but with the characterization of a more confident Gohan who believes in himself without needing the reassurance of his father. That's what made seeing Gohan beat a main villain again, which did not end up happening, unfortunately, seem fresh because his character was developed further from the Cell Saga. There's only one thing holding this fight back, and that's the fact that it isn't the ending of the Buu Saga. I was really upset at the more recent Moro arc because we spent nine months watching Vegeta train and get a new power just for him to look cool for less than one full chapter and then get relegated to being swatted away by the powered up villain and the more i think about it you can take boo saga gohan and moral arc vegeta and they might as well be the same character those are the two biggest instances of this franchise wasting my time you have a character who we spend a majority or a large part of the arc seeing train the story preps them up as the hero by having them stay away from the villain for an extraneous period of time and then they show up to look cool for a little bit before getting stomped. Number four, Gohan and Krillin versus Vegeta. After Vegeta transforms into a great ape, Goku is overwhelmed, leading Gohan and Krillin to return to the battlefield. When Yajirobe cuts off Vegeta's tail and the latter reverts back to normal, Krillin, Gohan, and Yajirobe are tasked with defeating Vegeta, who is later struck by a spirit bomb and allowed to leave Earth by Goku. I like this fight because it is a perfect way of subverting expectations without having it come completely out of nowhere and in having the end result feel satisfying the entire arc built up to this showdown between the saiyans and goku who we as the audience were led to believe was going to swoop in and save the day by himself instead when he's defeated other characters that we saw train so we know they prepared for this fight have to get involved to actually pull off the victory. 
it was the first time of two instances in Z where the main villain was not defeated by Goku, which was very fresh when you consider in the original series that each villain was defeated by Goku. <laughs> The reason this is further back than the top three are just because I consider the top three to matter more to Gohan's character. Although, again, this is still a very unique, refreshing final fight in the series overall. Number three, Gohan, Piccolo, and Krillin versus Nappa. After Tien's left arm was ripped off and Shoutsu sacrificed himself, Piccolo and Krillin attack Nappa before giving Gohan a chance to strike. Gohan runs away instead in fear, and Gohan, Piccolo, and Krillin spend the next several chapters slash episodes taking turns attacking Nappa until Piccolo is killed and Goku arrives. The main highlight of this fight is what it does for Gohan's character. He goes from being very intimidated by Nappa to where he won't even attack him to after the latter kills Piccolo, being fully willing and able to hurt Nappa. It also ties back to his hidden potential, where it plays off of what we saw during the Raditz fight and seeing Gohan angry and then be able to do damage to antagonists that the other older, more experienced characters are not able to do. Also, the scene of Piccolo dying and Gohan's reaction to it was heartfelt, especially after watching over a dozen episodes of the two mostly interacting with each other and in more pleasant terms as time went on. Retroactively, in light of GT Super and Heroes, it's nice to see characters that aren't Goku or Vegeta getting to have some actual screen time and plot importance. This is only lower than the other two because Nappa isn't as important of an antagonist as the ones I put above him. Number two, Gohan versus Frieza. After using the Namekian Dragon Balls, Gohan, Krillin, Dende, and Vegeta are confronted by Frieza. After Frieza transforms into his second form, he fights evenly with Piccolo before transforming into his third form. Then as Frieza is defeating Piccolo, Gohan blasts Frieza, who is able to repel the attack but is surprised by his power. I like this fight because it's very meaningful for the larger narrative of Z and showing Gohan's hidden strength. It also helps that it's part of the Frieza fight, which I've said before, probably out of the longer battles in the series does the most for its characters. So whether it's Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, Vegeta, or Krillin, all of them have some standout moments while fighting Frieza, which is something I wish was retained in later arcs. The only thing holding this back is its length because it's very short. And the first place fight just is more meaningful to the franchise and longer. Number one, Gohan versus Cell. I don't think this one comes as a surprise to anybody. <laughs> Throughout the Cell saga, aside from Android 19, Goku did not fight any of the androids due to at first being bedridden and then being in the Room of Spirit and Time, aka the hyperbolic time chamber. The suspense to see him fight the androids, the antagonist of the arc, was at an all-time high. We're treated to a fight between Cell and Goku that ends with the latter giving up and then requesting Gohan to fight in his place. During that fight, Gohan states his wishes to not kill Cell and informs the latter of his power increases that stem from his rage. Cell unleashes the Cell Juniors on the Z Fighters to elicit Gohan's rage, and the latter finally snaps when Cell steps on the disembodied Android 16's head, causing Gohan to transform into a Super Saiyan 2 after which he dispatches of the Cell Juniors and begins fighting Cell. During this fight, Cell spits up Android 18, Goku sacrifices himself, Cell returns, he kills Future Trunks, Vegeta jumps in the way and is saved from what was assuredly a death by Gohan at the cost of his arm, and then Gohan is able to defeat Cell after Vegeta distracts him and using the father-son Kamehameha. My two biggest reasons for placing this fight in first place are both its narrative importance and choreography. There are many interesting shots during the fight, such as when Super Saiyan 2 Gohan fires a Kamehameha wave uh, very quickly to counter Cell. 
The fight is of great narrative importance because it is the culmination of over 160 episodes of build up for Gohan to eventually surpass his father. Between him getting a strong headbutt on Raditz, stinging Nappa, fighting on par with Ninja Vegeta, hurting third form Frieza when no one else could, all of that led to Gohan fighting Cell. And Cell is a very perfect foil for Gohan since they're both related to Goku and rose to higher levels of power than many of their predecessors. So just as Gohan quickly became stronger than the other Z fighters, so did Cell over the other androids. One of the highlights of this fight are the twists and turns. I expected Gohan to easily defeat Cell after transforming similarly to how Goku completely overpowered Frieza when he became a Super Saiyan. Uh, his arm injury from saving Vegeta while contrived adds more tension to the fight and served as a way for both Goku and Vegeta, two characters that Super would later make me sick of, <laughs> to both have important roles in helping Gohan defeat Cell. The only issue I have with this fight is what motivates Gohan to become a Super Saiyan 2. In a tournament that features Krillin and Piccolo as spectators, two characters we as the audience know Gohan to have a close relationship with through the previous arcs, one would think the trigger for his transformation would be the pair getting severely injured during their fight against the Cell Juniors. But instead, Gohan transforms because an android that he barely interacted with and was programmed to kill his dad has his head crushed in by Cell. <laughs> this is less a problem of the fight and more of the story, but it's still hard for me to believe this would be the event that kicked off unlocking the strongest Super Saiyan form at the time. Hope you enjoyed the video and the next ranking will be on Piccolo's Top 10 Fights.